Uh, insulin resistance. This is another very important pathway, and it's emerging now to be in some way or another uh, impactful in at least one out of every three cancers that exist. So this is something that's particularly problematic. This has a lot to do with what's happening to our waistlines. If you've noticed, our waistlines are getting bigger, and they're getting bigger at an earlier age. And in fact, more and more people walking around on the planet are overweight and have a, basically a pre-diabetic condition called insulin resistance at a fairly uh, sometimes young age, but certainly long enough to start to unravel our health as well. So what does this mean? Generally speaking, and this is a bit oversimplified, if we live a life where we tend to eat processed foods and we eat, say, refined carbohydrates, so white sugar, white flour, saturated fats, which would be things, anything found, any baked good in a package, or um, some meat, some commercially fed, uh, meat from commercially fed animals, we eat that kind of diet, we don't get very much exercise, maybe we don't get quite enough sleep, that's the perfect recipe for setting up insulin resistance. Our blood sugars start to climb in that environment, our pancreas responds by secreting insulin because insulin is a chaperone for sugar. So literally, insulin hooks its arm around sugar and says, hey sugar, let's go into the cell, come on. And the insulin and the sugar, the insulin has his own special door to him, of course, and the door opens and brings sugar right in. Inside the cell, the sugar is made into energy. All's good. But what happens if you have a lot of sugar and a lot of insulin as a response in your bloodstream? Eventually, the cells say, enough, I don't want any more. And they change the locks, and now insulin can't get in. The other thing that can happen is that that insulin door, which is actually an insulin receptor on a cell, can be damaged by environmental toxins, which is a known cause of insulin resistance. Certain nutrient deficiencies like magnesium and B6 can cause insulin resistance because the receptor needs those molecules to function. So there's a lot of ways we can develop insulin resistance. And when we're insulin resistant, our cells eventually don't get enough sugar and in the meantime, with this extra sugar and insulin in the blood, let's say you have a little pod of cells that are malignant and they're growing along. Cancer cells have a voracious appetite because they're very bad metabolizers of energy. They need a lot of it because they're so, so bad or inefficient at utilizing it to make energy. So they literally cover their surfaces with insulin receptors. And unfortunately, when the rest of your body is insulin resistant, your cancer cells are not ever insulin resistant. So instead of that insulin and sugar going to your healthy cells, it preferentially gets soaked up by your cancer cells. And that's problematic for two reasons. One, you're feeding your cancer, so to speak. But really more the issue is the insulin, because insulin, as it gets into the cell, lets go of sugar, it actually goes through the nucleus and has an epigenetic effect, and it turns on genes that cause that cell to divide faster. So insulin is like putting your foot on the gas pedal and it actually is directly stimulating cancer growth.